I was also picked as a new judge to serve on the Ohio Judicial Conference Board of Editors for Ohio Jury Instructions. I actually participate in writing all of the jury instructions that we give to trial judges to instruct individuals in the law uh, in part of their trial work as jurors. Most importantly, there is no one like me on the Supreme Court, and that's why I respectfully ask for your vote. Thanks uh, to both of you, and now we're going to have uh, an exchange where I will ask a, a couple of questions to uh, each of the candidates, and uh, we'll uh, probably, I think, Carrie have a, about a, maybe two minutes or so for each. We'll see how the how the uh, questions go. Right now, Ohio elects judges, including the Supreme Court, and do you think this is the best method? Uh, both for this level at Supreme Court and for all other levels down to and including common pleas. Do you think it's the best method? And if not, what method uh, would you prefer or suggest? And uh, Judge Trapp, would you go ahead and answer first? You'll stay at the tables here for these. You know, judicial elections um, is an area of uh, law and public policy that I've been involved in for my entire professional career. I started, frankly, as a, as a law student working for the Cleveland Bar Association as a petition circulator the last time this state looked at the issue of merit selection. And you don't really know uh, what people think about judicial elections until you've stood outside the Uncle Bill's department store at Golden Gate Shopping Plaza all summer and talked to people about judicial elections. So that started my path in looking at this. And as a, a, a local and a state bar association leader, I've been deeply involved in it. And these are the conclusions that I've come to. The states that have merit selection retention, where the governor or through a process, a panel, and then a governor picks a judicial uh, uh, candidate, puts them in a seat, and then in a, a year or two, they have to stand for a retention election may look on the face of it to be the best way to go because it seems to take the politics out of it. The problem with that is that the states that have merit selection retention are now looking to return to the elective system and states such as Ohio that have the elective system are looking to return to merit, to ch change to merit selection. The key problem is the money, the money, the money. Unless you take the money out of judicial elections, you are going to have the same problems. We have to look at public financing of judicial elections right now. That is a non-starter in my opinion because we have to balance the budget. We cannot be adding another burden on top of the already uh, problemed budget that we have. But we need to start looking at it so that there is transparency. We know who, be, who is behind these uh, independent expenditure groups that's dumping uh, tens of millions of dollars into judicial races. Thank you, Judge Trapp. Justice Lansinger. There's no perfect system in how to elect judges in the state. But in the Constitution, currently, we elect judges. And if we wish to go to a different system, and I'm all for full discussion, full uh, consideration of any selection process, it would be a vote of the people. Twice before, the people were asked if they wished to change to an appointive system, they resoundingly said no. So that will be a, a, a consideration uh, that we should all keep our minds and, and hearts open to. With respect to the money, there are four states, North Carolina, New Mexico, Wisconsin, and West Virginia, that currently have public financing. North Carolina had between four and five million dollars to split between 11 candidates and found that they didn't have sufficient money to allow those candidates to get their message out. Think of Ohio with 11 million voters, a message to get out in seven media markets. That is why campaigns are so expensive. And I think it's important to recognize that. Thank you. Let's pursue that aspect uh, uh, just a little bit. Right now we do have the system where you're elected and, and uh, run and have to raise money to run a campaign. Mm -hmm. 
how do each of you uh, ensure that in raising the money for the campaigns or having your campaigns raise the money, you uh, don't have people concerned about how they perceive the process as being fair? And Justice Lansiker, would you answer first? Jim, you use that word perception, and I think that's very important. We need to understand that uh, perception doesn't necessarily mean reality. We all know at one time the world was perceived to be flat. That didn't make it so. But we need to explain as candidates that it doesn't matter who contributes to a campaign. First of all, they don't contribute to me as a justice. It's a campaign uh, that must uh, actually file reports, so it's all seen. You can look on the Secretary of State's website to see who the contributors are. Every uh, con contribution has to be made within limits, so there's no way that any particular group can influence uh, beyond the limits that are that are there. Those are presumed to be reasonable. And we do not keep any list to look at when there's a case in front of the court to say, did this party give, did this party not give? That is totally irrelevant. We do not uh, vote on cases depending on who the contributors, contributors are or are not. I can guarantee people that. Thank you. And uh, Judge Strapp. Well, when seven out of ten people in this country and half of the state court judges think that money directly influences outcomes in judicial cases, there is a problem. And we need to address that problem. Uh, my opponent talks about North Carolina. And I've had occasion to talk to both judges and bar association leaders in North Carolina. And while there, are, there is still work to be done in that state, as in other states with public financing, when you talk to the people that have run races on, under the old system and under the new system, they absolutely, to everyone that I've talked to, prefers the new system because it does, to an extent, take the money out of it. Then if you add a trigger provision, which uh, if you are running to take a seat and an independent expenditure group comes in with unlimited cash and very secretive lists of their contributors, if that money starts being funneled against you, there's a trigger provision that you will receive some funding so that you can counter those ads. And in the states that have had the trigger provision, it has had the effect of tamping down those large independent expenditures uh, that have flowed in from out of state to affect the outcome of judicial races. Now, perception is important because the whole reason why we submit ourselves to a judicial system is that we perceive that it is fair and impartial, and we believe in the outcome. Even if we lose a case, we will go along with it. There's not rioting in the streets after someone loses a case. But if people have lost faith and confidence in that system because they perceive, they perceive that their, the outcomes are not impartial, then the whole justice system breaks down. That's why it is concerning to me that the New York Times found that my opponent voted 75% of the time with her campaign contributors. Um, could I? That's yes, incorrect. Ahead, like that is incorrect. I have not had uh, any New York <coughs> Times article uh, looking at my record. All right, thank you. Um, we're going to pursue this uh, election process just a little bit more. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not as familiar with these things as the people in the profession, but a recent Supreme Court decision, I think, uh, indicated that we might be able to or required to fix a party label on the candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, as I said at the beginning, there's a, it's a nonpartisan uh, general election. The primaries that uh, are available for moving into the general election are partisan, but the general election is not. But there was a recent decision that indicated that party labels might become part of the uh, designation in the general election. And do you think this would be a help or a hindrance in the whole process? Uh, 